Welcome to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe for free always at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, on with the show. I remember always hearing about the evil eye. I remember it was uh, featured from Jafar. I believe that was his name, Jafar. Uh, Robin Williams and you know Aladdin that great film that most people saw when they were kids I was probably in my 20s but definitely liked that movie and enjoy it there is a movie coming out and it's called The Evil Eye and it reminded me of Jafar and Jafar says that because uh, in the Arabian idea that they're presenting in that story uh, it's kind of like uh, eye for an eye tooth for a tooth big old sword gonna lop your head off kind of a thing and uh, they call it the evil eye like like that's how you curse someone is you give them the evil eye I don't really know where it comes from if you anybody wants to tell me I'd love it Sound off in the comments or anywhere. Send me an email. RileyOnFilm at gmail.com But anyway, this movie looks interesting. It's called Evil Eye. And I think part of the culture is, or religion, is when you get the evil eye, it's like a mark. You're going to die eventually. Or be doomed to hell or something like that. So I haven't seen it, but I just thought I'd give it a little preview. Because it was here on my screen and I was thinking about it. And sometimes I forget to go back. So there you go. Okay, well it's good to be back here with you. I I haven't recorded for a little while. I think it's been over a week. But I've been watching a bunch of stuff. And I thought I would just take a look at uh, one or two uh, that I have seen recently. I like to do these where they're like a little egg about one movie only. That's, that's kind of my favorite way to make this kind of art. Uh, but... I have so much to say so I think I'm gonna talk about at least two I'm gonna bring up on real good which is my service I use R E E L G O O D to keep track of my watch list and the movies that I've seen the reason I sought out a service like this because when you do a podcast it's kind of like a diary and it's easy to forget which episode you mentioned something um, for example, you know, the Shawshank Redemption might be in a show that you did on movies about prison or inspirational movies about prison or whatever. So there's a lot of uh, things you have to take into account when you're doing a show like this. And the, one of the hardest things, yet most important, is to have a watch list so that you're always just perpetually finding things, putting them on there, checking them out, seeing if you want to watch them and so on and so forth but I have watched some shows and the service that I use to keep track of the shows that I watch is a track program and it is you know I don't even know what it's called tracked there we go with a K T R A K T as you know if you look at my history of my podcast I've been recording you'll see hostile which was really interesting movie. I really liked it. It was kind of predictable, and I really hated the protagonist character. He really annoyed me. But then later on, you find out it's more of a love story, and the horror movie turns to a love story, and then it turns to a horror movie again, and then it switches back two or three times, and then it ends. So I'm proud of myself for saying it like that, so I don't give away the twist. Um... Titan, I saw at the theater it was really good uh, wait a minute correction self-correction I actually rented that I believe it was like 10 bucks I think it was kind of expensive it's probably come down by now I saw it well I saw it November 7th so I guess I have seen it pretty recently at any rate um, I don't know where you can get a hold of that I'm really not an expert on that you guys know that but I just look until I find and if I have to pay sometimes I do so I can see the movies I want to see. Antlers. 
Antlers is the one that I have gotten a little behind on. I saw this movie on the 7th, the same day. It's got Carrie Russell. It's directed by Scott Cooper. Pretty pretty decent film. And uh, starts out pretty neat. I don't want to do spoilers on this one, though. I want people to experience it. There's so few horror movies out these days. So I want to give you the chance to experience it on your own without any... Uh, Spoiling. No spoilers. No spoilers. Antlers. It means just what you think it means. There's a creature with antlers. Uh, so yeah, there will be there will be t- tiny revelations, but nothing that'll give away the plot. I don't know how they how they did it, but they somehow they made this creature that the antlers would shoot out, and and uh, that was kind of interesting. This movie was all over the place man i don't even hardly know where to begin with this movie let's just let's just read what tract says pray it desires not you meaning the antlers creature a young teacher discovers that her troubled student's father and younger brother harbor a deadly supernatural secret Taking the boy into her care, the teacher must fight for their survival against horrors beyond imagination. You know what this one really needed was a backstory. They didn't give any backstory. They they talked about the Wendigo. And, you know, if you've heard of the Wendigo, it's kind of like a wolf man. Uh, but I think it's a deer has antlers. So anyway, so this is supposed to be a Wendigo. It's like a modern retelling of Wendigo. Scott Cooper is so good. And I and I want to just talk about him for one second. He's the director. And I love, I like this movie. I love some other stuff he's done. He did Get Low, which was hilarious. He did For Sale by Owner, which I did not like. He did Broken Trail, which was eh, okay. Uh, he did something called Takedown that I've never seen. Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Ooh, I saw that one and I like that one. It's good for him there. And then finally, The X-Files. So, The X-Files went on and on and on forever. So, that's another thing he's done. Now, I don't know when his picture was taken, but he looks young. So, we'll see uh, what else he comes up with. That's not a whole lot of stuff, but these are all big actors. Really big actors. Robert Duvall and such. But I just don't understand why they didn't do any backstory. They didn't like explain. Like usually when there's a movie. Like there was a movie recently about a Wendigo. And these guys were like backpacking. And then they went into a house to to have dinner. And the family was kind enough to bring them in. And you find out all this scary morose stuff. The legend of the Wendigo. If they would have put that in this movie. It would have made it way better. But as it is. You've got Carrie Russell looking scared in every scene. uh, Which is. I'm glad she's doing horror. But I just wonder if she maybe is the best one to be doing horror. I notice she's in another movie out too now. Maybe she's challenging herself with horror. I don't know why they would pick her. But she's probably the most vanilla actress that's ever lived. Anyway, I don't know where these thoughts come from. I must be a Wendigo. They come out like antlers. I'm funny, I know. I want to give you guys a quick update on what's going on. I uh, am going to continue teaching at the college next semester. Uh... I am doing some other odd jobs, and those two things together are what you need to do when you have a dream of teaching at the community college. Because if you don't have a PhD, there is hardly any full-time positions that will have you. You have to really, like they say now, side hustle. You have to have side hustles. Yeah, part-time English teachers at the community college are like the original Ubers or the original side hustlers. I remember there, there was one guy I was in class with and he used to sweep up trash at Disneyland when he wasn't teaching his courses at, at uh, Fullerton College. So you really can't make it on a part-time job uh, at the college and there just is no full-time to be had. I hope that changes. I, I heard the union's going to try and get the ability to give teacher, part-time teachers more credits, which would be more pay and 
you know, we always like that. But anyway, I digress. I just want to tell you guys I haven't been around a lot. You know, I've been of some major changes in my life. And uh, I did nothing wrong. But um, my wife left me. And it was, it was really tough. It still is. But, you know, she's just a person. I'm just a person. Two people have to want to save a marriage. And push has come to shove. And we're, we've become separated legally now. And I live in my own place. I think I said that already. But just to kind of remind you guys that, you know, that that's sort of what I'm going through. But through all of this, I think sometimes when you get really challenged by things, it helps codify what it is that you really do want. And I know I really enjoy playing around with this podcast and, you know, talking about movies and seeing movies. And it's a slow go right now. But I think as a result of this uh, separation pending divorce, I think I'm going to be able to get into it a lot more. So I'm really excited. But, you know, those of you that have, have, have uh, you know, sent me emails and stuff and just said, hang in there and tell me, hey, this isn't the end, bro. Hang in there. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's been... I don't really know the word for it. It's just been a very dark time. I feel like I'm walking in the darkness and there's not even a moon to light my way. But I'm walking on the beach. <laughs> That's going to be my metaphor because I'm starting to walk more like a free person. And that's what, uh, you know, my study of Buddhism, my study of listening to Thich Nhat Tan. Uh, basically the spokesperson for Buddhism in the world, that's who he is uh, sort of like the Pope of Buddhism I guess, but he's just a funny little man and he just gives a lot of really good advice one thing he says is to observe what's going on around you and do not judge it just observe it, take it in love yourself too, he says that, love yourself because only when you love yourself and see yourself as the way you are can you really look at the world or your lover and say, I love you too? It has to start with you loving yourself. And that's another great thing that I've been, I always knew it, but uh, reigniting that idea of self love. I think it's very important. They say that if you have self love, you're more attractive. I don't know about that one. I mean, you always hope, but. I just focus. I'm, I'm focused on my own way. I'm focused on my own life. I'm focused on my girls. I'm focused on my son who's moved out. But the girls are live with me uh, about half the week. Sometimes more. And uh, we just have a good time. I'm, I'm enjoying them a lot. And I just haven't had any time to do any making podcasts. Uh, I was invited by the lamb to pick a show. I picked a show. I didn't get picked. But if I would have got picked, I wouldn't have had time for it anyway. Because uh, I'm so caught up in trying to just, you know, deal with all this change. So, rather than go on and on about another movie, I'm getting a little choked up. So, I, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, stay off those computers. Because somebody might be in another room wishing you were with them. But, onward, upward, and we are going to go ahead and move into another movie next time. Thank you for listening to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe always for free at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, have a great day.